Hey everyone, this is Shashank. I hope you all are doing well today. And I also hope that you all are watching my AWS videos as well. So as you can see on my screen today, we are going to discuss on AWS Backup. So AWS Backup by name, it suggests a backup solution provided by AWS. So earlier days, we used to write some Lambda function with the help of uh, supported scripting languages like Python or Node.js. We used to write those uh, Lambda functions to take the backup across the AWS services. But with this backup solution, AWS has provided us a scenario where we can manage our backups centrally at one location and we can automate our backup of data across the uh, AWS services within cloud as well as the on-premise data center with the help of uh, AWS Storage Gateway. So this diagram shows how AWS backup works in general. So you just have to create some backup plan and the supported services, you have to assign the resources. So supported services as of now with backup is EFS, Storage Gateway, DynamoDB, RDS, and EBS. Then the backup will get triggered based upon the requirement, like based upon uh, the days that you have selected, like daily backup or weekly backup kind of thing. So based upon the requirement, once you're done, done with the configuration of the backup plan, then it will gonna trigger the backup at the set time duration and it will gonna monitor the environment. You can do the restore, you can do the modification as well, whenever you want. So this is how AWS backup works in general as, as an architectural overview. So as of now, not every services has been supported. There are only like five, as I said. So you have to assign those resources to take the backup. So we'll go to our AWS management console to perform the practical demo. So this is my AWS management console. To go to the backup services, go to services and in the storage section, you will gonna find AWS backup service. So click that. Again, this backup service is region specific. It's not global in nature. Okay, so this is the dashboard where we can see like we can manage our backup plans, create on-demand backup and restore backup as well. And as you can see, this is the dashboard that I have where uh, I have one backup is completed, one job of backup is completed and the restore job for one is failed. Okay, so to do the configuration of the backup, what we have to do, we have to create a plan first. So go to the plan. I already have created one, but for this uh, demo, I'm gonna create a new plan. So create backup plan. So there are like three options. Start from the existing backup plan. So you already have a backup plan created and you want to uh, do a replica of that configuration, then you can choose that. Build a new plan. You can uh, do it from the scratch and mm -hmm. define a plan using JSON format. Using JSON format, you just do the, you create a template for uh, backup and you can just paste it around in this particular section that will wanna create everything for you. So I'm gonna use build a new plan from scratch. So let's skip this as, and with this video, I'm gonna backup EBS and I'm gonna show you how to restore the EBS volume as well. The same process can be done for RDS, Storage Gateway and DynamoDB. We just have to assign the resources. We just have to take care of the resources while assigning it to take the backup. So I'll give the name as uh, EBS Backup. Let's see, Backup. The rule name, I'm gonna keep it same. Now, schedule-wise, uh, on the frequency side, you can uh, take like every 12 hours, daily, weekly, monthly, or as per the crons, you can do the custom cron expression as well. So I'll select the daily backup. The default backup window is basically, it's uh, 5 a.m. UTC, which is the default backup window from AWS. So you can change it by clicking the customize backup window. I'm gonna have, again, you can change it to like uh, 1 a.m. UTC time. Start the backup within like eight hours, seven hours. That totally depends upon the requirement that you are going to select. The life cycle part. 
Lifecycle is basically transfer your existing backup after certain dates, transfer to the cold storage. So that will help you to the reduce the cost of the backup as well. So we have a few options over here, days after creation, weeks after creation, months and year. So I'm gonna select weeks. Let's say after four weeks, move the backup to cold storage. <coughs> Expiry. So if you want to uh, retire your backup or expire your backup, you can do that. Let's say after 90 days transition, transitioning to the cold storage, you have to delete a data. So let's say after four months of creation and going to the cold storage, delete the data or expire the data. Backup vault, you have to create a backup vault. So we can use the default or you can create a new one. So backup vault is basically a container where you are keeping your backups. So I'm gonna create a new backup vault. So click on create. Let's say EBS backup. You can uh, use the encryption key. So every backup needs to be encrypted in nature so that it cannot be hacked easily, right? So you can create it, uh, create a new key or you can use the default. Uh, given by AWS. So I'm gonna use default for this module. You can do the tagging as well, which is optional in nature. Okay, let's create backup vault. My backup vault is created and that's it. Uh, you can tag the recovery points as well, which, which is like optional. As of now, I'm not doing that. Tagging, again, tagging is, let's say, uh, the reason of using the tags is like during the audit purpose is very useful while you audit your environment which resources are being used for which services right so let's say ebs test backup so i'm gonna hit create plan here we go my plan is created so you can see backup plan id version id and last modified this is the backup rule. You can add as many as rule as you can in one backup plan, okay? And you can view the JSON format as well. So let's say if you have to create multiple, uh, I mean, this particular expression will help you to write down a new JSON uh, format uh, in terms of creating the backup plan with the help of JSON format, okay? Click close. Now, Resource assignment. Uh, till the time you don't assign any resource, it will not gonna back up that particular resource. As I said, five resources or five services are supported by AWS backup. So click on assign resource. Again, I'm gonna have the naming convention as EBS. You can create a new role. So basically uh, the default role uh, here is if AWS backup default role is not present, one will can one can create of its own with correct permission. So if you select the default role, Amazon will take care of the all role and permissions that is required to take the backup by AWS backup services, or you can create by your own. So I'm gonna use the default. Assigning of the resources. So I'm gonna have the resource ID. You can see we have five, Dynamo, EBS, EFS, RDS, and Storage Gateway. So I'm gonna select EBS. Okay, let's see. We have a volume over here. Okay, and you can add as many resource ID that you have, you want to take a backup, right? So as of now, I have only EBS. So I'm gonna use the EBS, assign resource. And here we go. We can, we can see like we have a resource already assigned over here. So this will gonna take the backup as per the backup plan that we have uh, defined, like daily 1 a.m. UTC time, uh, start the backup within eight hours and transition to cold storage after four weeks and expire after four months. So this is the one that uh, we have created a backup. This is how you create a backup. You can do the on-demand, this, so this is something we are scheduling a backup. If you want to take an on-demand backup, then you have to go to the protected resources. You can do that as well. I have already created one. So let's create on-demand backup. So for me, it's EBS. This is the volume ID. Customized backup window, you can uh, uh, create as per your requirement, or if you create backup now, it will do an immediate backup. Again, the life cycle, let's say weeks, after four weeks, 
and I'm going to have my plan, uh, EBS backup as my backup vault. Okay. Default role and create on demand backup. So as you can see, its status is created. Now, if you refresh it, this will going to show you running status. So this will going to take some time to take the backup. Uh, I guess nearby five minutes or less than that. So once that is done, you'll be able to see in vault, if you go to the vault and if you go to the created vault, then a recovery point over here will get created. So I'll show you how that looks like. So uh, again, on the dashboard side, you can see one in progress, one is completed. Okay. So let's go to the vault. This is my previous wall that I have created. As you can see, the recovery point should look like this once the backup job is completed. Okay, so from here, what you can do, click on this, you can edit all the requirements. So if you click edit and click the edit the backup summary, so you can change the expiration uh, duration. Days after creation is four. This is my previous backup that I have created. Okay. You can delete this snapshot as well, and you can restore this particular uh, backup as well. So this is my EBS size needs to be like one GB. I guess the storage is around uh, one GB I have created. Availability zone where you want to restore it, let's say one B and default role. And if you create, I mean, if you click restore backup, this will gonna, or let's click on restore. It's gonna say pending and then running. Again, this is my previous backup that I have uh, created for the restore part. Okay, because the new backup that I have created, it's basically, it's in the state of, uh, let's go to the jobs it's still running okay as i said this will gonna take like uh, five minutes or less than that as per the size of the volume that we have and this was the previous backup that i have created which is completed if you go to the restore jobs you can see one is failed and the one which we have created for the restore to run so this is the one you can see it's running so once the restore is completed if you go to the ebs volume you will gonna see uh, EBS volume already created over there once this is completed. So this is how we create backup jobs and restore it from AWS backup. Just try it on your account, give it a try, like uh, create a EBS volume, create a backup and try to do a restore with an on-demand backup. And yeah, that's it. Uh, just try it out and uh, if you have any concern, let me know. Just place out a comment in the comment section and I'll be there to help you.